I'd like uh, to ask uh, Commissioner Langston to lead us in the pledge, and then I'll ask our uh, prayer for us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What I'd like for us to, to do today is, uh, if you so desire, uh, bow your head in, in silent prayer for uh, change and uh, healing in our country. So let us pray. Amen. 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 Okay, we'll call the uh, regular meeting of the City Commission to order this morning. And our consent agenda is uh, we've got some uh, swearing in of our newly elected commissioners. So, if you guys would like to uh, come forward, we got a judge here with us, Carla, uh, and uh, we look forward to you guys getting sworn in and having two more good years with us. So, uh, Judge, you want to? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank Hoffman, you. would you like to go first, sir? I'd be glad to. All right. I think someone else. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ms. Yeah, Sharon, you want to come forward? Yeah. I, Scott Hoffman, do solemnly swear. I, Scott Hoffman, do solemnly swear. That I will support, protect, and defend. That I will support, protect, and defend. The Constitution and Government of the United States. The Constitution and the Government of the United States. The State of Florida and Gulf County, Florida. The State of Florida and Gulf County, Florida. That I am duly qualified to hold office. That I am duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution of the State. Under the Constitution of the State. And that I will well, and that I will well, and faithfully perform, and faithfully perform the duties of the office of commissioner of the city of Port St. Joe. The duties of the officer of the commissioner of Port St. Joe. Upon which I am now about to enter. Unto which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Judge. Yes, Mr. Lowry. Come on up. Got a helper today. Outstanding. You all right, sir? Good. Good. My wife, Brooke, or my daughter, Brooklyn, my wife, Amber. Thank y'all for being here today. You stand by your mom there and place your hand on the Bible, please. Raise your hand or repeat after me. I, Brett Lowry, do I, solemnly swear. I, Brett Lowry, do solemnly swear. That I will support, protect, and defend. That I will support, protect, and defend the Constitution and government of the United States. The Constitution and government of the United States. The state of Florida. The state of Florida. And Gulf County, Florida. And Gulf County, Florida. That I am duly qualified to hold office. That I'm duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution of the state. Under the Constitution of the state. And that I will well. And that I will well. And faithfully perform the duties. And faithfully the duties of the office of commissioner for the city of Fort St. Joe of the office of commissioner of Fort St. Joe upon which I'm now about to enter on um, which I'm now about to enter so help me God so help me God congratulations Mr. Mayor. always take care of us and we appreciate it yes sir to the seat yeah you guys congratulations again thank you two, two more good years Okay, uh, next item uh, on the con uh, consent agenda is minutes of a regular meeting of June the 2nd. 
Everybody's had a uh, chance to look over those. If there are no in, uh, corrections or additions, we'll uh, entertain a motion to approve. We'll move. Motion by Commissioner Langston. Second. Second by Commissioner Hoffman. Approve the minutes of uh, June 2nd. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passed 5 0. Okie doke. Mr. City Attorney, you got anything for us today? Uh, I actually don't have anything specific for you guys today, but if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy. Any questions for an attorney? Did you ever get a reply back from the county attorney? No, I have not. I bumped into him a couple different places and he promises to get back to me, but he does not. I have, as far as on that issue, I, have, I did get a response back from St. Joe Company because I'm thinking about it and it's what gets back to me. Thank you. I did get a response from the insurance provider and that, that we did have $2,600 that, that we've received from insurance on that particular building that we wouldn't have to return if we don't have ownership of it and cancel the insurance coverage. So $2,600? Two, $2,600. Yes. It was about $20,000 in damage, but after depreciation deductibles, it, it ended up being twenty six on that bill. On the other piece of property with the compactor and the compactor building, we received about $160,000, but that's okay because we do have clear ownership. And the deed has been recorded. Yes, sir. Hi, yes. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I could. Yes, sir. The, the only thing I've heard from the county uh, from Mr. Hammond was that we could lease it as we have done in the past uh, to um, the BCC. Yeah. But well, what if we so, we decide we don't want to do that? Do they want to buy it back from us? I, That's I don't what know. I don't, I, it, I was basically told it was ours. We could lease it and just like we have in the past. So I, I don't know if a, a letter might be yeah i think a letter from them would, would be an order for us to have a starting point anyway but but what if we uh, made according how much how much work we're going to have to do to get it ready and do we want to spend money to do that uh, i think that's the bottom line from a, from yeah. a fema and insurance standpoint they want clarity on on who owns the issue i don't, I don't think fema is concerned about uh the fact that I mean we operate the building, we own the building, but FEMA wants to have some answer to go to insurance as to who owns it. It's pretty clear who owns what. We own we own the 3.2 acres and they own the one point two. That's clear. We have a key to put that one we have a key to the other. And then the question is going forward, are we going to take over ownership of the 1.2 or is it going to remain in the county? We need to give them clear definitions so we know how to move forward with I think insurance. maybe I think maybe I should just go ahead and formally write the county a letter and just ask what, what do you guys want to do with this? What is your plans? What you, uh, and make some official. I'll just put it that way. They they just come just deed it deed it to us and they find them out if they want to do that. Or maybe even what are our plans too, you know. Well, our plan is if we don't operate it as a <coughs> transfer, a waste transfer station. Have to offer it back to the St. Joe Company. If they don't want it, then we have to offer it back to the county. If they don't want it, then we can do whatever we want. That's well, our that's our 3.2 though. That's just the 3.2. Yeah, right. 1.5 and we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Hoffman, you got anything for us today? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we had a chance to look over the minutes and the meeting minutes and see what we have and what we don't have. Find out what they like. Just basically ask them what you guys want to do. Yeah. Y'all don't care about that. Yeah. That's not good. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the attorney? Okay, Jim, on our old business. Yes, sir. The first item we have is uh, in reference to the COVID 19 update. Uh, we officially have opened up everything in, from the city standpoint uh, to a limited capacity except for the summer recreation program. At our last meeting, we did have a discussion with Ms. Kimberly Dean from the Workforce Board and representatives uh, from the Stack House to try to come up with a protocol and sanitation plan for each of the programs. So that's where we're at today to consider whether we're going to open up these two programs for some. Yeah, we've got representatives from the health department here. Uh, uh, Sarah, if you and Britt would like to 
come forward. Uh, I've, you know, got a little discussion, a uh, little soapbox I'd like to stand up on anyway while we're on this. Uh, I'm real concerned that, uh, that uh, we're not doing what we need to do in the city. Uh, you don't see mask anywhere. Uh, you, you go, yeah, there's two masks. I'm staying corrected, but uh, I think we need to do a whole lot better, and especially we need to uh, set an example for our visitors coming in. They see us with no mask. Uh, they don't feel like they've got to wear a mask. Uh, our, uh, our restaurants, uh, wait staff, uh, they're not wearing masks. I, I got an email uh, today, matter of fact, from a lady uh, passing through town and used to spend all her summers down here at the beach. She loved how we're coming back from the storm. Everything looks good. But she went to eat lunch, and now the wait staff at the restaurant wearing masks. She was concerned about that as, as I am. Uh, you know, I, I mean, this commission could, if we wanted to, make a motion that that uh, everybody in the city limits of Fort St. Joe, when they're out, in the public have to wear a mask. I don't think we really want to do that, but our cases are, are coming up. We've got two more this morning. And uh, I, I think uh, I, I love to see people be a little more responsible um, for themselves, their neighbors, their family, the uh, folks who are older like me. And uh, so uh, that that's that's my soapbox for this morning. But let's, let's think about that and try to uh, encourage uh, folks to wear your mask. If you go out in public, go inside, <coughs> and you go in the big dollar store, wherever, wear your mask. And, and if you see folks in there, you know, they're not, ask them why. And uh, we, we've got to take it seriously. And I, I, I don't think we have been lately. It's, we're, uh, we're advertised as a safe place to come, but now everybody's coming and bringing their problem with them. So, uh, so, Anyway, Ms. Sir, I'll turn it over to you. My name is Sarah Hines. I'm the administrator for the Florida Department of Health in Franklin and in Gulf. Um, just on the mask piece, you know, we're, we, we don't have the authority to enforce the mask. Um, but, you know, we, we are still promoting social distancing and due to slowing the spread of the virus. And we still promote the, the use of cloth masks in places difficult to maintain social distancing. So uh, for cloth masks in particular, with Gulf County, the health department, um, through the Florida Department of Health, has distributed over 20,000 masks um, to Gulf County residents and the same amount um, to Franklin residents. So hopefully this will help to reduce exposures as well. But yes, we do, we do recommend that you can use a mask um, in places that are difficult to maintain social distancing. So thank you for um, mentioning that this morning. I just wanted to give some just quick updates. Um, so I'm Sarah Hines, but let me let me let Brittany introduce herself and maybe your new credential. How about that? My name is uh, Brittany Beauchamp. Um, I've been in the health department for about 12 years, give or take a little bit on and off. Um, recently graduated a family nurse practitioner program and looking forward to coming along with health department as their provider as our previous provider. Sorry, sorry. That's a huge accomplishment. So um, thank you. And um, she's been sort of the person that we've been leaning on for that medical expert, subject matter expert advice, which has just been so tremendous to work with um, through this pandemic. You know, that we're all we're all in this together. So, um, and as we all know, you know, June fifth, the state moved into phase two of Florida's reopening plan. And that's phase two. There's still several phases to get through. So it is important to follow the CDC guidance. But um, the state will continue to update the COVID-19 dashboard daily with the number of tests and the number of positives. So you're right, we have two more positives today. Uh, both of them are travel related. One individual is a Gulf County resident who traveled out of the state. And the other individual was a non-Florida resident who traveled into the state, tested positive, left our county, but we still have that counted on our case total. So that's the situation. And we'll continue to send out press releases and work closely with Tim Cox with the STAR to make sure that the public is aware. Um, so special thanks to Mr. In, in the audience today. It's been really great to help us continue to message um, the important information that we need to go out timely. You know, each month we're going um, to continue to test 2% of the population as part of the state's safe 
phased reopening strategy. Healthcare partners are continuing to provide, to provide testing. We have set up testing locations at the Tino tent. Um, Marshall let us use their uh, FEMA trailer. That is nice. We have our own trailer that we're trying to um, renovate right now. Um, but we, we do make it visible so that people know, yes, you can come get tested. It's a new swab, um, sent off to the lab, takes two to five days. It's an easy drive through concept. And then we also have um, testing available at our health department. So you just call by appointment and um, we'll actually meet you out. We call curbside service. We'll meet you out to your, in your car. You call ahead because it is by appointment and we um, take your information over the phone and then we go out and do the test that way. Super quick, simple process. Um, the testing days, correct me if I'm wrong, Tuesday through Thursday, 1.30 to 3.30? 8.30 to 10.30. 8.30 to 10.30. I'm sorry, I just left the Franklin Commission meeting. So, <laughs> okay. um, so just call us, 227-1276, and we'll make sure that you, if you uh, would like to get tested, we want to make that available to you. Again, that 2% benchmark, it restarts every single month. So yes, we want to make sure we're testing, and that includes um, residents and non-residents. We just want to see what's happening in our community. Um, we're the second lowest county in the state still. Um, and as we work through those reopening phases, you know, more people are coming in, more traveling situation. We're going to see some more cases. Um, it's not going to completely go away, but um, when we do get cases, we're ready, we're ready for it. Um, the goal is to maintain that medical system of capacity, making sure that the people who need medical care the most have access to it. Right, Brittany? Okay. Um, so yeah, your, your health department covers both Gulf and Franklin, and we have we have just the most amazing team possible. I could not be more grateful to live um, and work in these two counties. And I think that's the majority of the updates. Of course, I want to thank all of you for all of your outreach efforts that you've been doing as leaders in this community. Um, and we're just going to continue to work together as we as we work through these phases. Now, when it comes to the stack house, um, you know. Let's keep in mind that the health department, we do not have the authority to approve or disapprove plans. We know that. Um, but social distancing still remains key to preventing spread of the virus, right? Um, and it's going to be difficult to maintain social distancing at the deck house. Uh, there's risk associated with opening. We have to take that into consideration. Uh, cases of contact tracing, when we do investigative work, have been sourced back to outbreaks occurring at summer camps and other youth programs um, in other counties. So um, we do understand that the staff house has sort of served as a, as a daycare for some and has helped people, uh, helped parents you know, stay at work. I, I completely understand. Um, but it's not a daycare establishment. Um, and the reason why the, the daycares in our community <laughs> that have opened are working is because they are grouped into smaller numbers of kids. And it's the same group of kids each day. And it, they're tied to the same <coughs> teacher or, or daycare for and that's why that's been effective. Um, the point of going to the stack house, the stack house is to kind of mingle with other kids, but social distancing would be very challenging. So um, again, we can't approve or disapprove, but we do have um, the ability just to let you know some of the health risks that would be associated um, if it were to open. Do you have anything to add? No, I think it's okay. Over everything. Social distancing, I think, is going to be your biggest challenge. Your biggest mm -hmm. and hardest challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys sure. for coming mm -hmm. and. Uh, We've got to uh, make a tough decision this morning on, on Stackhouse as well as the Washington Gym uh, Recreation Area. So uh, I'll open up the floor for uh, discussion for uh, that uh, item. Uh, I want to say something. Go um, well, right ahead. Um, at the end of the day, you know, people do do what they want to do. Um, men are already living their lives, you know, carefree. Um, all we are uh, ought to be responsible for is allowing them to understand um, social distance. So when, when it comes to dealing with um, kids and our elderly, we, we need to understand that it's not it's not about race. Number one, our number one goal is to protect our citizens. So it's not about the stack house against Washington High. Uh, uh, um, it's not about how many white kids are attending um, the stack house how many blacks are attending Washington High. We um, have more kids of, of um, we have more um, kids that are of not a color attending the stack, not attending uh, Washington High, um, after school, not after school program, summer program, than um, we do blacks. You 
know, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost a 50 50 ratio if you look at it. So, definitely, race, ethnicity, none of that has anything to do with the decision that we're going to make. I feel like one day we're going to have to start stepping out and allowing our parents, the parents, to um, take more control of their kids. And um, the doors are going to be open. The kids are already hanging around each other. Decision that I make, I feel that we need some structure. We need um, uh, our kids to have an understanding of that, and instead of running around doing other things that they have, may have no business doing. We had several um, block parties, so-called block parties, on North, in, in North Fort St. Joe the last few weeks. I mean, people are everywhere, so. Uh, when it comes to uh, a program that's providing assistance to some parents, I know that uh, the Washington Gym is in um, a daycare facility, but it does add structure to the families' uh, lives. So when we make that decision of whether we should open Washington High or not, it shouldn't be, a, it shouldn't be about race. It's about giving our kids opportunity to have some structure in their lives. A lot of kids don't have that. They walk around the streets and and uh, getting the things that, that normally they wouldn't do. So I believe it's really important that we to really think about opening Washington Rick. We need to think about opening Stackhouse. There are two different buildings. Stackhouse is small, Washington Rick has a good size in it where you can um, distance kids um, a little better. Um, outside facilities are, are, are nice. Uh, you have plenty of um, Area out there to separate kids if you have to. <coughs> so, with that said, I believe that I support um, opening Washington Rick Recreation Center. I, I, um, I thought about it and uh, come to the conclusion that well, somebody gave me some good words um, this morning. I mean, the churches are full, restaurants are full. Uh, adults are doing and enjoying what they want to do. Uh, Ms. Ms. Podine may have some type of class that teaches kids how to social distance themselves. You know? So let's think about uh, the kids right now and think about letting them uh, get out and, and do some construction. And that's how I feel about the situation. Thank you, sir. Marion, you're absolutely spot on, Eric. I think um, the, one, the only point that you missed is you know, this summer program as well is, is where a lot of these kids eat during the day. You know, and that may be just the meal that they're getting that whole day. Um, I think that there's a way to do this, limit the inside contact and start promoting more outside programs. You know, maybe only you know, 75 kids allowed in the gym at any given time. You have outdoor activities organized. You do kickball, you do basketball, whatever you want to do. Uh, same thing with the stack house. Cut it down to only 25 people inside. You know, this isn't going to be board games and video games anymore this summer. You're going to be outside playing on the playground or you know, playing ball. Um, I'm with you. I support it. I support opening it with, with major restrictions on indoor activity. <laughs> and I also, I think we need to find out the number of kids that are attending the programs. Uh, I don't think that the number should increase as the summer goes along. I think we should keep the same amount of kids um, continuously uh, to average out, and hopefully they can be from the same home. Uh, if not, you know, uh, we'll. Um, it, it, it's going to be a challenge. I know it's going to be a challenge, but I think it can be done. I do have a question. Do we allow visitors to attend those programs, kids that are on vacation from out of state? Do they come to the Stack House or the Washington Gym? Yeah. On the the Stack House does allow visitors. I would, I would be against that, that portion of it. <clears throat> if somebody has a cousin who's visiting for the summer, we allow them to come in. So how, how, how do we deal with that situation? Well, I, 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 we just heard from Sarah Hines that the way we're getting this is people going places and people coming here. We're not spreading it amongst ourselves. It didn't say I went to a neighbor's house and I caught COVID. Right. It said somebody gave it to me from out of state. Uh, so I'm, I'm very skeptical allowing out of towners to utilize our programs. Look, uh, I think, don't they have applications with the kids' addresses and um, um, driver's license, uh, a parent's driver's license, or something like that? I think that. Ms. Bodin should be able to filter out the ones that um, um, live here and don't uh, um, coming in from 
amount of time, and that would be real, it was very, very important, uh, Miss Kim, in order to keep everything um, down. I mean, so, yeah, yeah, but what, do we have a way to do that at the Stark House? Yeah, you can monitor the parents on there. Now, most of the kids don't have the dog bites or ID, but I think it is possible that you could when you sign up with kids that the parents have, parents have to show that the kids are enrolled in the school of Duff County, or Duff County Senate, so I do think that is feasible. Okay. Okay. Mr. Just real quick, I, I know what the parents are going through, but I'm going through it too. I mean, I'm paying a babysitter, you know, $500 a month just to watch my kids, and I know I'm not the only one doing it. Now, money doesn't matter I, uh, to an extent, um, but I'm, I'm going to be on the supporting side as well and opening both. Okay. Um, also, let's, let's un have an, un give an understanding too. You have uh, um, single parents that do work and work hard. You have some, you know, that may try to get over on a little welfare, whatever. But majority of um, single parents, they work hard, you know. And um, sometimes they may not have anywhere to take their kids. You know? Like Red, he has to get a babysitter. Um, not saying that it's a it, uh, open it up with your daycare, but it, it helps. I mean, that's just the bottom line. It helps. It helps them. Okay. Okay, I just want to come on. First, I agree completely with Commissioner Langston. This topic has nothing to do with what side of town we live on. It has to do with what's safest for the kids. To insinuate that it does is an insult to me and anyone else in the decision process. Um, I, I do think that not only does uh, the Washington Gym program meet a need in the community, I think they do an amazing job while meeting that need. And I sat here and read over their plans and I and the fact that Brittany is still here, I was going to ask Brittany to weigh in on the plan. Um, if you, if you, and you probably need time to read it, but I would like some input from the health department after reading the plan because mm -hmm. I think it's really well written. Uh, and, and I realize the health department doesn't make the decision, doesn't enforce it, but I believe we should at least hear them and, and maybe they can make some suggestions to the plan and to the plan at the stack house. Uh, all along, you've heard me say that I'm going to support what comes down from the governor's office and from the CDC. So my question really would be to the health department, do, this, do the two plans meet the requirements of the CDC and what the governor has allowed when they opened up the summer program? Uh, if they don't, then we may have to make a few adjustments. I am going to be in total support of opening the Washington gym program uh, there's too many kids and too many families that are impacted by that. So unless someone can say, hey, if you open this, we're going to have a, uh, a big negative impact, then, then you, got, you have my support. Uh, the stack house, I read the plans on that. It's a little bit different. Um, for one, I talked to Jim today prior to the meeting and said, well, do we have the application people to actually work and run the program. Right now, we don't have that. Uh, we have two, okay, we have two people. Uh, I, I think that we can still make this happen. Uh, and and I, it may take another few days to tweak the plan with the help of the uh, health department and input from them, but I'm, I'm in support of, of opening both plans, or both locations. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other comments? I assume, uh, Sarah, do you, have you uh, seen the plans on either for Stack House reopening or Stack House reopening or the uh, Washington Gym reopening? Have you guys had a chance to look at that at all? Well, the only plan that I've received so far is the Stack House plan. So is Ms. Kim here? Here we go. Oh, there uh, she is. We had a quick there. conversation about her, her plan. Um, in place, and we can certainly work with you. Um, but if it's, I'm not sure if a decision was made on on, um, on support of the plan or not yet moving forward. But we did have a chance to kind of review the stat house plan again, taking into consideration the challenges associated with social distancing. Um, do you want to get you 
slide, just a couple of like this is a Brittany. We, we talked about this. Yesterday. Okay. <laughs> we were sitting at our testing site coming up with ideas of okay, how, how would this how would this layout look? Um, okay. So there needs to be a way to reach parents for emergencies at the staff house. Um, but you know, but also the children have symptoms of COVID-19. So I can see my Yep. You know, also, I can see. Um, a registration form of some kind to let them know that COVID-19 is still ongoing and kids mingling together increase exposure to the virus. Um, we're in you know, phase two, as I mentioned, of the government's reopening plan. We still have more places to go. So we really just don't want to let our guard down. Um, so having some sort of registration form will also help to collect that parent caregiver contact information. You could have, and you could use the opportunity to explain that your child will be screened each day. That's that's a really important process. Um, the Methodist Learning Center, which is uh, one of the daycares here, has a template that you can look to. I'm just trying to think of other opportunities. Upon arrival of the stack house, your child will be screened for symptoms of COVID-19, which does include a temperature check. Children with symptoms will not be permitted to partake in any stack house activities. So some suggestions that we have there. Um, forehead thermometers. So we, we, screening would include a temperature check of some sort. Um, and uh, we were asked, you know, could we could we order some, but we could make those available. Um, it looks like in the, the stack house plan, there's an, an early kid crew in the morning, and then an old, older youth group in the afternoon. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. So um, it would be preferred that parents, you know, are present, dropping off uh, at least the early kid crew to, to help answer screening questions and to keep children out. You know, if they were have symptoms. I know that's probably going to be somewhat of a challenge if you move forward on this and kids come on their bikes and, and things of that nature. Um, and I have already mentioned it being, again, <laughs> difficult for social distancing, uh, you know, but you do want to encourage that six feet apart. When it comes to the square footage of the stack house, it's small, and in this, in, it sounds like um, if you were to, first of all, the lessons better of the kids who are entering. Um, but we would recommend, you know, break, we were thinking about maybe rotating the kids in hydration breaks. So split the amount of students or amount of children that are there, um, however that happens every 45 minutes or so, half outside, half inside, rotate, monitor the kiddos outside to make sure you're not having fallen out from the heat. It's hot out there, I get that. Um, clean as you're able to do a deep clean in between the shifts, like it was mentioned in the, in the, the stack house plan. So those are those are some suggestions that we have. Again, we can't throw these through, um, and you really do have to take into consideration. You know, if you have one kid who who has symptoms and they have positive, you have to do a lot of contact tracing involved for that for that particular stack house. If you had a kid, would you allow them to go to the stack house based on the recommended guidelines that we've written? Difficult to say. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> very, very much on the spot. Um, You're the expert. I think, yeah, I think children's safety is our obviously our our priority, and we want to make sure they're they're safe at all times. I prefer the daycare daycare route just based on smaller groups of children and sustained amount of kids with the same provider. Um, but I'm a public health employee. So I can't get sick, and I need to make sure that my family is, um, you know, healthy at all times, so that we can continue to work for our community. So it's a challenging question, um, hard to hard to certainly answer. I'll give you another minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate um, your yeah, guidance. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's important. Yeah, yeah sure, is, sure. Thank you so much. We'll be working with you more. Okay. Right. Thank good. you. I thought it was a pretty good answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sound like a politician. <laughs> okay, we're uh, we're under old business and uh, talk about opening up and uh, some good plans here. She made some good suggestions. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's it's very tough. Uh, there's been some very good statements. Uh, I, I came to the meeting uh, leaning probably 60 40 not to open. Uh, but uh, heard some convincing arguments this morning, all of them 
very good arguments. I, I would say that uh, we, we still have the option uh, to uh, shut it down if things get out of hand. Uh, I, I know we have that option. So uh, with the health department increasing amount of testing, uh, that uh, will give us a, a somewhat of guidelines of what, what we need to do going forward. Uh, temperature checks are, are a big thing. Uh, Jim, do, do we have uh, infrared uh, thermometers? We're going to have to have that. The ear thermometer is not going to work. Yes, if you go in hand right now, it sounds like uh, we need to get some spare hands to see if we can do some. Yeah. Give their expertise as well. Yeah. I, I, I received some uh, information yesterday. Uh, they're about retail about a hundred dollars a piece for the infrared. So, so I, we they can provide them that'd be even better. But uh, I, I, we've got we've got to have them. Probably three. You got to have a backup one in each place and a backup in case one of them uh, uh, doesn't work. So. Anyway, we want to move on and we'll, uh, let's, uh, I'll entertain a motion for a uh, summer recreation program. So we'll move now. Uh, just just one, one minute, we'll get a motion, second, and we'll have discussion. Okay, and your motion, uh, Commissioner Langston, is what? The motion is um, that we open both Stack House and um, Washington Rick summer um, recreation. Unless, uh, how should I put it? If we have any increase in uh, in COVID, or, or what? How should I put that? Um, if the contract tracing brings it back to the stack houses, the place that it happened. Okay. Or if we deem necessary to close the company specific, right? Yeah. Revisit it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, your recommendation is open <coughs> and with the option of revisiting it if uh, need be. Okay. Plan laid out. Okay. Exactly. Everybody understand that the plans it, um, and or we tweak them as we go along. Really, <clears throat> increase the uh, restriction. Okay. Is there a second? Second for discussion. Okay. There's a second by Commissioner Hoffman for discussion. Um, I'd like to ask if Commissioner Langston would be open to maybe having language in there that would say. We'll be working closely with the health department because right now we just ask them to work with both groups to maybe tweak and hopefully improve their plan. Um, I'd like to have the health department in an active role in partnership with, with all the parties. And if they see a breakdown, then they could report back to us or work individually with both programs and make suggestions. Because I think we all in agreement. Every player in the in the plan is trying to do the best to keep it safe, healthy. So if they see a breakdown, that we would support and encourage them to work with the, the different groups and, uh, and making sure we're doing everything that we can. Okay. That next person I can. So you just want to make a motion that would so you open it up and uh, with the uh, uh, assistance of the so county health department. <laughs> Motion. Motion stands. Motion stands. Okay. Uh, discussion. Any more from the full of uh, the commissioners? Okay, I'll open up the floor. Anybody like to discuss? Come forward. Okay. Fair. We had discussion as to limiting the Cuff County students. Is that something you want to consider? Or you want to clear it up to all students? I think the health department would probably offer that advice. Yeah, I think I think that was that was understood. But if uh, we need to add that to the motion. Uh, you be agreeable to that. Yes, sir. strictly the Cuff County um, students. Okay. Second, okay with that. Yes, so okay. To be aware that we would be turning away Gulf County students who come with a cousin from out of town, and then they would be turned away. Unless the cousin wants to go home and the right resident stay. Yeah, right. But just to be aware, that, that, that's what we're mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, discussion from the floor, Mr. Davis. You like to come forward? Uh, 
name is Marvin Davis. And the uh, question I have is I heard about the Stack House. I heard anything about Washington Recreation Center uh, and their plans. It was discussed. Oh, no, the plans are there. It, yeah, the plan is there, but is the public fully aware of the of the, the, the plan? I know Ms. Bodine came up last meeting, and she she, she is here to today. If she'd like to come forward, she laid out a plan. She laid out a plan to us, a very meticulous plan, and it's uh, it, it covers all bases. Actually, it's stricter than the, that stack house restrictions, okay. and uh, so, awesome. I mean we're feeling comfortable with it. Uh, so yeah, you, uh, you guys may be comfortable with it, but yeah. you know, it's the public, you know, because it's our children. And like I say, right. we, we want to make sure, I want to make sure that it's, it, it's really safe and, and, and you know, not the kids is at risk. Right. And, and, and everybody's going to have a different opinion about yeah. what's safe and what's not. Uh, we right. just have to make a decision that, that looks best to us and the experts have approved and the people that run the, the system have approved. So, uh, so uh, I. So if she has a plan, I, I, like, I like to hear it before you guys vote. Here's the plan. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of summarize yeah, yeah, it okay. real quick. That's all I have. <clears throat> They're going to have children in groups of 15. Four groups will be in the classroom areas. Three groups will be in the gym, but separated into subgroups of 15 by dividers, eight, nine, ten-year-olds. Two groups will be in the reading room. A divider will separate the room for four and five year olds. As much as possible, children will be spaced one chair apart. There are seven groups for a total of 105 kids. They will be staying primarily in their groups, with the exception of those located in the gym, where they will walk up to the tables near the kitchen area to pick up their lunch, which will be carried back to their class space and consumed there or go to the computer lab or to watch a weekly movie. For those in Ms. Likely's room in the Wig building, their lunch will be brought to them. They have computers in the classroom and their weekly movie can be shown there as well. All field trips will be local. I've attached the waivers that we plan to use which covers anybody they work with. Uh, that would be city, county, DuPont, and uh, so so in a nutshell, that's what they're going to do. And then they go into how they're going to sanitize. That's, that's all I want to hear. Yes, sir. What, yes, sir. What the plan was. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to come forward? Charles, yeah, I'm not here to speak on one way or the other with you guys making the decision, but that's what you guys making the decision. But I want to ask a question. What is uh, legal? Somebody come out and something happened, whether it's a point of somebody trying to get out to the gym or the city liability? We have insurance for all liability insurance when anything happens on our property. Uh, correct, Mr. Attorney. Yes. <clears throat> and we'll probably find out what the city is going to tell This is just mm -hmm. we don't face this before. Right. So, so that, that, the only reason I asked that question is because that would be something that would be, I understand, I'm, I'm for the kids, I'm understanding that, but I look at it a, a different way than most people, I guess. Uh, even with church, we're not having church at you. We, we, we go in from uh, social media or different things. Man. Uh, me, my personal opinion, I think not only the city, the county, and the state, I think that we we relaxing too much and we let not go. Most time when we do that, it bites you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Uh, 
First item we have is the Maddox Park. We have Ms. Eva Maddox Davis here today representing the uh, Maddox family to uh, give you an update as to uh, where we're at this morning. Thank you for coming, Ms. Eva. We appreciate it. Hey, we're here with the commissions. I'm, I'm Eva Davis. I live in Tallahassee, but I grew up in St. Joe. And thank you for the opportunity for us to present some of our ideas about how we might like to see some repairs or innovations to the park. Uh, I think you have a pretty extensive packet of materials where we have um, the original brochure when the park was dedicated, and then a lot of pictures over the years showing you what happened on that property down in the early 1900s. That home that, that stood until Hurricane Michael was built in 1937 and it lasted for 81 years uh, until Hurricane Michael just totally obliterated it. The only thing that remains now is the fireplace. And there's a picture in your packet of what the fireplace looked like before it was destroyed. Um, the significance there historically is that those stones were battle stones that were old sailing vessels that came in here in Lake St. Joseph, like 1830 to 1844. 
my grandfather would go along with them and pick them up and then he used them to front and place them on the parkway. So that, that's the significance of those that were there. That's really the only um, original thing from the home that's left. The roofs that are there were from when they lived at the house up a few years ago. Uh, by way of roof background, our family ties go back to that land about 150 years. Our great grandfather uh, from Appalachicola was hired in 1905 to stay on the bay. Some uh, men were looking for a way to export pines and they were building a railroad from Chattahoochee down to St. Joe, but they needed a way to have a dock to export the timber. So our great grandfather was hired to come down, help sound the bay, find the deepest point where the water came the closest to the land, and then they would build a dock. So that was about uh, 1905 to 1910, and my grandfather helped with that. They built a little bunk house, which is shown there in the packet, and he lived in bunk houses they built it. I think it was completed about 1910 when the first sailing vessel in Norwegian ship with the death came over to help murder them. Um, our grandfather then leased that land. He left for World War I in France and came back and married my grandmother. What a lot of people don't really know though is that there's an interesting lawsuit behind that land. Um, after leasing the land from the Port St. Joe Dock and Terminal Company, our grandparents entered into a sales contract in 1925 to purchase the land for the installment payment. Well, the Great Depression occurred and they were only able to make their interest payments on the land. But the St. Joe Dock and Terminal Railway Company accepted all their interest payments. Unfortunately, my grandmother saved all her receipts. Well, fast forward 12 years later in 1937, my grandfather went to make his last payment on the land and receive title. And Mr. Ed Ball had instructed the company not to give them title to the land. He felt that they Altered on the contract, even though the company wanted to keep all of their money. So the final check was placed in escrow, and my grandparents hired a, law, hired a lawyer, Mr. Finch, out of Mariana, and they went to circuit court, and my grandparents prevailed. But the most amazing thing to us is that um, the company then appealed to the Florida Supreme Court, and in 1939, the Florida Supreme Court ruled in my grandparents' favor, and they received title, and it's not often. That individuals prevail against the larger companies that they deal with. So, this land was always very special to us for that reason. Um, my grandparents then built another home on the land. They lived there until their deaths in 1977 and 1982. Mother and dad kept the land, they moved it out to the house that we were making. And then we began thinking, what can we do? Well, we met with the Nature Conservancy and uh, we weren't totally in step with them on what they wanted to do. And by God's grace, we stumbled into the Florida Communities Trust. And we worked for a couple of years with them. There were pages and assessments of the land. And then the Florida Communities Trust was going to commit the money to purchase the land to my parents. But my parents had two points they wanted to be made on that land. They wanted it to be a passive park where it would only be used for recreational purposes. And the second thing is they wanted to make sure, remembering the lawsuit, the company, that the land would only be used as a park and it could never be sold. It could never be traded. And the company could never get the money. So we were pleased. We finalized the agreement in 1996 with the Florida Communities Trust. The brochure on the front was from 1997 with the opening of the park. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, if you look on the back page of the brochure, you'll see our family there. The young girl in the front in the purple overalls is our daughter Catherine, who is our Ashley. But this is our daughter Catherine, who is now many years older. <laughs> but uh, we have enjoyed that for many, many years, and we always want to have that as a part that's open to the people. Um, I have been in contact. We have four points we just like to briefly make, and I would hasten to say we realize we have no plan for that land. That's gone. What we would offer are suggestions for what might be a good way to use the land going forward now. Uh, towards the back of the brochure, you'll see some pictures. What we want to recapture is that simple old sort of feeling. I've been in touch with uh, Lauren Cruz and Bill Beatty with the Florida Communities Trust to make sure that our suggestions are in line with uh, the control because, because the land was purchased with the Florida Community Trust dollars. The Florida Communities Trust in perpetuity will have final say over the use.
used to that land of working with the city or anybody else. The first thing is we like the valid county and the fireplace to somehow, somehow be incorporated in a historical manner since that reaches back to Old St. Joe. And we don't have too many things from Old St. Joe that are still around. Uh, the next three items, we have pictures at the very back of the packet. We've noticed that a lot of Southern families have a gazebo, and the first gap is this demolished. Then people along 98 will have an absolute clear view all the way down to the bay. The nicest gazebo that I've been able to find is one over in Atlantica. And we've included two pictures there of the gazebo from Appalach, just a freestanding open space where people could come and sit, look out on the bay. We would hope that there would be enough funding when there would be a future of some payment to have nice vegetation like brick pavers so that this could really be a fine spot in Port St. Joe that everybody could be proud of. The second thing, uh, there's a picture that I found uh, is an observation tower. And it would be maybe on the end of the property near the bay and it would allow visitors to go up maybe 20 feet to look out on the bay and get a little better perspective of the shoreline. The Tower of St. George appears to rise about 20 feet. Um, I understand there are liability issues that might cause concern, but we have a lighthouse next door, so I'm sure you're familiar with your liability issues. Uh, the, the third, and, I'm sorry, the fourth and final thing is that um, you go to some places like the mountains or even the whole state park, and you'll see a viewfinder on these large mountain commercial binoculars. We think that would be a nice addition where people could look out on the bay. Um, I looked at some in Wakala this past week. I've also Googled uh, viewfinders. There's a company called Seekers out of Fairhope, Alabama. They have different models that you have some that would be ADA compatible with them in the wheelchair on the ground. Or if you wanted to make $2,500 plus shipping, you could have a viewfinder up on the observation deck so people would have a bit of an elevated view to look out on the bay. The other items, I'm sure the restroom facilities, the park benches, the bike rack, the walking trails we need to do with here. But those are just our thoughts, and I'd be happy to give this recovery all the numbers uh, that I have for the people that I've spoken with at the Florida Communities Trust. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Ms. Eva, I appreciate that uh, presentation. It's, uh, if we don't talk about history, it's forgotten. And uh, I wasn't the best history student in, back in high school days, but as I've gotten older, I have a greater appreciation for history, and I, I like to, it's great to be reminded, and I, I didn't have some of those stories you just talked about, so I, I really appreciated that. And uh, From my perspective, I, it's a great area. We're getting ready to, we, we got the money to, uh, and the approval, I think we got the approval to, to uh, pipe that ditch right next to it, and so uh, that'll that'll make it even uh, more accessible. So uh, I'm excited uh, about getting something back there. Well, I, I have a couple things. Um, first, I, I realized how old I may actually be getting when you pointed out who the young lady over here is. And I remember them, her and maybe her sister riding bikes all over town uh, every summer. So I was like, oh, where I am about to be 50. You made uh, a statement that said uh, you don't feel like you have a claim to the land legally. Are you an attorney? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to point out, I, I believe you do have, it may not be a legal claim, but I believe that it will always be uh, a part of your family's property. So thank you for the suggestion. A great suggestion. Uh, the only other question I had is, when you mentioned the restroom that used to be there, um, another committee has talked about building a much larger restroom up towards the corner past the, the lighthouse. If we did move forward with that, would you still ask to have the restroom uh, replaced close to the hall? Uh, no, sir, that would be under the authority of the Florida Communities Trust and their guidelines as okay. to what was needed. They might be able to look at the property and determine the best to Right, so, okay. Because my support is going to be build it back. However, the family and this other group, I don't know, uh, leads us in the, that direction. And side note, I've never liked Ed Ball for 
for his shenanigans up in Wakulla County in the spring. So uh, I, I dislike him even more today. <laughs> you can't stay at the court in anymore. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I was told that when I moved to St. Joe that I had to like it more. Anyway, thank you. Anybody out there? Questions, comments from Ms. David? I just thank you for coming today. Uh, it's good to see you. Good talk. I love I love the designs. I'd be happy with either. Yeah. So let's, let's get to work. I just like to say thank you for your input and um, like Commissioner Hoffman said, you know, you know the family you guys, you know, I'm mm -hmm. doing my best to support. Yeah, I spoke with the board of trust several times. Make sure that I was doing the guidelines. Outside of your suggestions because I don't want to lose Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Jim. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Seaman. Uh, moving along, the next item we have is the MFA overlay system task order. As you know, we've been working uh, for the past couple of years to try to uh, rezone the MLK corridor. We started the process, Mr. Ray Greer. It's got us to this point now that to finish the project for the city, we would need to actually do an overlay district that would actually give the rules for the land development regulation. We have the, uh, the zoning force has been done, but we need to do the overlay district. For your consideration today, we do have a task order from Mr. Ray Greer to complete that task for us. Jim, I correct in assuming that we do have a budgeted amount of money for our planner, correct? Yes, we do. That's within that budget. budget. It is. Yes, sir. we do. We're planning for protection folks every year. We could include Mr. Randy Greer. Motion to approve the uh, the order. Second. Motion uh, by Commissioner Hoffman, second by Commissioner Ashbrook to approve the task order to move forward with uh, the overlay district to uh, for the renovation and improvement of uh, Mark Luther King Boulevard. Uh, discussion. Okay. Any discussion? I have any discussion from any commissioner first? Anybody? We've been discussing for six years, Mayor. Let's do Excuse it. me? We've been discussing for six years. Let's get it done. Come forward, please. Chester Davis, President of PAC, uh, on the board of the CDC. Uh, we also had uh, Mr. John Hannon on the Zoom that called in case we wanted to have some questions, technical questions, because he was part of the plan and setting up that overlay when we uh, put in the application uh, to increase the density on the bottom of the can. So if we had him call in, I don't know if he was listening or not, but he was hoping that he would be available in case you guys had any questions about that overlay because he had worked with Mr. Greer um, uh, and putting that plan together. And so if they was gonna move forward with that, you know, I was hoping that the city would include any uh, information that he can bring forth to help that, that go forward. The other thing is that I was, last time I was at the board meeting, um, we brought up the fact that John Henry uh, being our uh, consultant. Jasper, can we just stick to this for right now? The this is, that doesn't pertain to this motion. And we'll allow you to speak on that after we get through this uh, motion. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions for uh, Mr. Greer or uh, Mr. Henry, who is uh, who's on Zoom at the Present time. I'm comfortable with uh, moving forward and approving. I don't need any. Yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be public hearings oh, yeah. in the midst of this. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed 5 and 0. All righty. Next item. Yes, sir. The next item we have is a reference to the four way stop. Yes. Um, you guys right there on uh, Williams? Yeah. 
no law enforcement, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a four-way stop right there by that supervisor of elections in the, the hair salon. Um, I hear this every year. I'm sure you all do too whenever you go file your paperwork with the SOE, but it's true. Nobody's stopping when they're going down Long Avenue. They seem to stop this way, but not that way. And if the assumption is that these cars are going to stop, the other direction is going to just go ahead and go. And I witnessed almost two near, near accidents there. I just don't see a reason why Long Avenue can't be at First Street on that, on that portion. That's, Chief, like comments on that, please, sir. I, I, I don't have an opinion either way. I'll take the Sarah Hines answer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't have an opinion either way, but uh, two and a half years ago, I think this board was brought the same thing, and we didn't do it because I think you need to talk to Miss Debbie Butler who had the hair shop across the street. She's the one that way back when asked for it because of her customers backing out into the road and almost causing accidents. And I think that that's probably someone, someone needs to reach out to. To the owner of that To business. find out if she's okay with it. Cause she wasn't okay with it last time and that's why I got squashed. That's really and truly too, if you think about it, the health department, not the health department, supervisor the elections office. Uh, they're also backing out in the lawn. Um, so, I, I, good, good thought. I thought about it. But, you know, I, I, I just want to bring it up today and kind of feel all the board. I didn't realize that two and a half years ago it was shot down by this fucker either. Yeah. But I do know that people aren't stopping it. Maybe just a few tickets. And I've, I've had quite a few comments and suggestions about opening it also. But I do think. <clears throat> Be totally transparent. Let's talk to sure. talk to both sides, Jim. If you reach out to Supervisor Election Office and any business on that, that will be affected on those four corners. Uh, I think we all feel better about doing uh, making a change if we're going to make one. That's good. Okay, that's all I have about that. All right. Next item, Mr. Jim. Yes, sir. Last time we had. Uh, it was the boat ramp credit card receipt, Mr. Ashford. Uh, yes, this actually brought this up geez, probably four years ago when we were having, well, when the parking problems on Reed finally came in front of this board. Um, and we talked about possibly a pay to park. And I, we found some machines at our last uh, convention that we had down in Orlando. <clears throat> and they, at the time, I think a solar machine was right around $9,500. Basically, print you out a ticket, you put in your credit card or pay cash or however you want to pay, uh, even through an app. I think that, that might be the answer to our boat ramp uh, problems as far as people not paying. But then I spoke to who told me about the arm? Was that you, Jim? No, Mike. I'm actually starting to think now that maybe having an arm for entry into that portion right there where the restrooms are at. So the people that want to go to the park can just go left and park in there in that city lot. But if you want to access the boat ramp, you're going to have to pay to get past the arm. Uh, either a situation like that or an actual credit card machine right at the boat ramp would be the only way that we can kind of ensure uh, that everybody that's launched the boat is paid. And, and for the enforcement side of it, you don't have to involve the police department if we don't want to. Uh, you put up signs saying that this lot is patrolled by XYZ towing company. And then we just gave them a whole bunch of business too. It takes us out of the loop, but we'll ensure that we get paid. Just want to bring it up for discussion. I know that we had several instances where people can't put money in because it's full instances where there's not an where there's not an envelope available uh, or if they don't have cash you know they're like i'll get you next time uh, but this is this is one way to ensure that we get all of our money back out of the program and we've got the money in our program fund a little over thirty thousand dollars now i think this would pay for itself in a july month i mean it's i don't know what the number of people are that don't pay I hear about it all the time from the boat captain saying, I see these guys are not paying. So it, it's a problem we know about, and I think it's a simple solution. Oh, I, and I agree with you totally, uh, but uh, uh, to me, there are a whole lot of other little issues that we need to talk about. And I, this is probably a good two hour workshop, but I, I like to make the workshop once for all, get the uh, sticker program in place, do all those things involved the public a little more that use it a lot and maybe at the end of that workshop end of that day we'll have something in place let's do this 
and, and move on. Uh, so we have staff just go on a technology hunt and see what we can find and what the pricing is for these different options. I don't have a problem with that at all. I mean, but the one issue with the arm is uh, Gulf County residents. How are they going to get to the, the arm without paying something? And we've exempted them and the city residents. So uh, I think there's a lot we have to talk about. We need to just I, don't I think it's a great idea. Uh, my suggestion would be just look and focus on the machines that print out something to put on your dash. Like you go to the airport parking, that way whoever is enforcing it can look for that item showing that they pay. Right now, we don't really have a lot of signs. I think there's people that have no idea you're supposed to pay. Right. So, so place you put the money looks like a garbage receptacle to me. So I think part of it's on us. It's not lit up like it should be. Uh, the other committee's working on getting power finally run to run a machine and light it up. Uh, but I, I think it's a good idea. We just got to work out the fine details. Yeah. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about a workshop uh, sooner than later. Uh, if you guys want a workshop, it, let the public know that we are going to do that, and then both captains and all affected can uh, can be in attendance. Uh, today being the uh, 16th, uh, what about and, and what time of, uh, to make it accessible to everyone? I assume five o'clock, six o'clock to be the time to have it. Is that good with everybody? Now we're talking about a day. Uh, we've got uh, in this month, we've got, uh, well, I'm, all, I'm going all next week, uh, 29th to 30th of, of this month. Anybody got comments on one of those days? I'm going back to get into that week. Okay. All right. So we'll hop over into July. Uh, we got PSJRA at 11 o'clock on the on the seventh, uh, and we meet at 12. So make it a marathon. I'm open. Oh, you want to do it that day? I'm Already just I'm just worried about folks not being able to be here in the middle of the day. So we come out at five again. We'll come back. Oh, okay. I don't have a problem with that. Get it all done in one day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And after our meeting, go on the rest. But anyway, anybody? Y'all okay with July 7th at 5 or 6? What, what's the pleasure? Uh, uh, good. <coughs> good. Okay. I just asked staff to have some recommendations on the sticker deal and make yeah. it a possible ordinance. And make sure it hits the uh, hits the, our Facebook page and website and all that to let folks know. And uh, so, and Mr. Croft will, I'm sure, uh, it'll be in the paper and we'll, we need to try to get this thing. It's almost like parking downtown. We need to go ahead and get this thing off. off Mr. The Jim, we would have PDRB that day at four o'clock. PDRB at four o'clock. Doesn't normally last over an hour, does That's it? Okay, so we'll just, be here And I do agree with the machine. We've got, we've got, we've got the money. And that's what, that's what we charge for for improvements. So, uh, okie dokie. Uh, any, any other new business, Jim? Okay. Public Works, Mr. Grantland. Yes, just, uh, just briefly after our last meeting, <clears throat> some more discussed options as far as dump grinding. So, Mr. Anderson and myself, you know, went out and used the local contract. And the two beds you have cover basically our Bayfront property, Frank Bay one to the Methodist Church. So we thought they were fairly reasonable and we can get to you guys and so okay. Everybody understand what, what we're looking at. We got it in our budget. We're in our yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got our faith ratio. We're we still in the wedding mode. <laughs> <laughs> And what we can do if the board likes, we can look through these. They look through them, we can look for other parts. 
similar to what we're doing with our paints and another repair type of hurricane like this. Okay, so I entertain a motion to uh, drive a stump saw Bayfront City property. So Mr. Murphy. Okay, the motion by Commissioner Lyons is there a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Ashbrook. Any discussion on making the city look nice? All in favor, aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion passed five votes. So tell Mr. Honor and Blue. Well, I had here, what's your question? What's the update on this? The uh, reflected sticks in front of Hungry Alley's being replaced. I need to call Benny on that. Uh, I know he ordered them. I just don't know whether that makes process. Okay. Uh, they are repairing sidewalks on Constitution. I did see that today. Uh, what about the ticket? What about the ticket? That is going to be this afternoon. Okay. Actually, thank you for appreciating this. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okie doke, surface water, Mr. Larry. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> unless the board has questions for me, I really don't have any transition. Still going smooth? Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Waste water, Mr. Kevin. Uh, there's a handout from Kevin uh, over here. Somewhere. There it is. Uh, the beds to uh, cut the hole in um, one of the old MCB, MCB buildings uh, so you can make that a shop. You just repurposing the building. It's just to cut a hole and shore up the wall so you can put a door in and make that a shop. Um, beds are really far apart. Uh, yeah, I'm not that sure. Wrong. <laughs> the, just his history when right after the hurricane, when I asked about doing this thing, the garage door people, their estimate. Were anywhere from four to you know, one guy said it's you know, four or five thousand, the other guy said it's gonna be five or eight. You know, nobody's over 10 as far as their estimate of what that is. So I expected, you know, anywhere from that seven eight thousand dollars, six thousand. That's kind of what I expected for bid. So the low bid is where I would like to go. I think the guys are, are capable and they're licensed. Well, you're comfortable, even though that that far apart, you're comfortable with um, yes. no uh, no the prior work. Or, uh, I don't know anything about the prior work. They're new in town. Uh, they live here. They okay. Live much. They are local. Okay. That's 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 local uh, starting out near here. So, to me, the, the the project is one that we could do ourselves, but we just don't have the manpower and the tools. I have to rent the stuff. You cut a wall and you cut up some angle. It's not that extensive of a project. So I'm comfortable with the low bid. Okay, good. All right, good. Well, I'll entertain a motion for uh, accept the low bid for the uh, wastewater treatment plant shop block wall open. So move. Ooh. Motion by Commissioner Ashbrook. There's a second. <laughs> second by Commissioner Langston. Discussion. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Outside of that, and our pond is still doing well. We, we lost in the last two months 12 inches of course, rent three foot. Um, so the plan is to discharge starting in July. So we'll finish this month out without any discharges. They've been great. We're just sitting right on the edge for most of it. And it will come. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So that's all. I've got. All right. Questioning. Or the question of when do you plan to start uh, this uh, project? Uh, as soon as I can award the Tell them is they're good to go. Okay. We're going to start right away. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Mike. Uh, we, we have submitted the request for the NRCS grant for the ditch clearing. Uh, then they'll process that. They'll send a final document back for your approval. Uh, in the meantime, John and I are going to get together and lay out a bid spec and try to get a, a handle on what those costs would be. 
we have discussed with the county uh, because they have the same grant for the same process and we are clear on, on the ditches uh, that they're going to handle. Uh, and, and so we think it'll limit our scope uh, significantly uh, and we don't foresee uh, that larger project on our end. Uh, but John and I will get together and so we'll be able to have your fit specs before you so we'll have a clear understanding of, of the work that's going to be done and when you get that grant progressed for, for, for your plan. And what's the dollar amount of that grant? The total amount is 238000 we have available to us, but we don't anticipate that that will be that much. Uh, so that's moving forward. We continue to move forward with insurance work and FEMA claims. Those processes are still ongoing. Okay. Questions from Mike? Anybody? Uh, I've got a question. Um, cemetery, we got a cemetery fund, right? We'll see it. Uh, we have budgeted, we have um, funds budgeted in the recreation department for the cemetery. So, so how much we, we have been, so how much we have budgeted? Um, I can't remember the number off the top of my head. I think it's $10,000. But I was just concerned because we have a crew was out there, um, gravesite crew was out at the graveyard and um, Peabody's son, I think it might be. Focus on um, um, believe a lot. Yeah, yeah. something that's we have benches there, but we need something that's over here. I, I talked to John earlier, uh, I think it was last week, well, yesterday, yeah. and um, they're gonna put a tent out Saturday mm -hmm. around um, the seat. But we do need to be thinking about uh, with the pandemic going on, and we have another uh, two uh, graveside. We, uh, we think about the sunlight and how it's affecting, especially older people. Yeah. Uh, we we're talking about a uh, gazebo similar once in Holly Hill that, that was dedicated to. Yeah, we talked about I think we, we already have, 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 have one. one. We have one, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. but it's not it's not covering completely covering the seats. I mean, come out yeah, of yeah. the What's what different about our forest here? We do large oak trees at Holly that provide shade over the other entrance. Yeah. Four children sounds like a million. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'll talk with John and we'll make sure that we have, uh, we have a few and I'll get in contact with him and we'll go set up a team or whatever for now. But I just need to think that we can go ahead and uh, start thinking about doing something different. Instead of running John them out there every Friday or uh, every Tuesday or whatever, the day before funeral, to set up a tent, we need to have some increase back up. Yep. So we do have some insurance money that we've not uh, put back into the facility so we can get together and, and figure out how to allocate those funds. Better. We still have a budget coming up, so yep, that's right. I just want to start thinking about it. I got it. Right. Okay, real quick, I forgot to tell the board. We are receiving our uh, uh, DFC auction and they start next week. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. You're All righty, Mr. Engineer, Mr. Baxley. How are y'all? Good. Thank you. Um, on my list of updates, uh, the first item are the NRDA stormwater grant. Uh, the first one is Forest Park. That's the one where DP provided, or Northwest Florida, I'm sorry, provided comments. I have those comments and then we'll be submitting those back for review, which that'll trigger their response. And at some point they'll schedule that second hearing. I don't think anybody knows at that point when it'll be. I've heard rumors that DP will actually be back in their office on the 26th. So I'm assuming the water management district will probably follow suit, but I would be expecting some catch up time past that, so it could be in the July, mid-August before we have that second period. Um, the second one is the stormwater master plan. We're still actually working through taking the old city maps, the stormwater system, looking at every structure in the city and updating that map, getting all the structures and all the piping cataloged at this point. Um, Jim did provide me a due date document on that, so I'll be communicating that information Um, EOT walking path, that's Fort City Trail. I did finally receive confirmation on Friday that we are approved for an extension of that grant. 
Um, we're required to submit the task one item, which about 50% of those are complete. The biggest part of that task one uh, submittal is the actual engineering design, but we have until September 5th of 2020 to submit those task one items and get approved. And that's well within our time frame. Um, once we submit those task one items, they'll assess everything and give us a final due date for the project where I'm expecting them to extend it, you know, six months to a year. I think the final due date if it was a year extension would be November of 2021. So I'm expecting them to make construction in 2021 of November. Uh, CBG sewer, those plans are complete. The job is advertised and the bids are due on 7 15. So that was the redesign <coughs> sewer to a CIPC job to be uh, lined in the sewer system. Um, Long Avenue and First Street Lift Station, we received the permit yesterday. So all items are complete for the SRS deadline on 630. Um, last one uh, is the commercial district water and sewer trunk grant application I met with John last week. We discussed what we thought was the best plan moving forward and what I've done is I found some old documents where we did the water line replacement downtown. We actually located the sewer during that, all the utilities. So I'm creating a master map right now of our sewer. We're going to provide that. I'm going to provide it to John we're going to provide it to Churchwell to give us a price to actually go camera that system to see what we have and what the use what the condition is. That'll help us determine what the best method of repair or rehabilitation is. Do, uh, Jim, do we need to uh, make any kind of motion type approval for, for just wait till they get somewhat of a price of, uh, or do we need to approve that um, with a cap or I mean, it's the people that we have on, that we've used before, is that right, John? Yeah, we, we used protocol things before. Uh, I mean, can, what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, can we, can we go ahead and approve that if it's under your bid threshold, uh, Jim? If it's this under $10,000, it just saves time and not wait for the very next meeting. Go ahead and camera it, and then they maybe come back to us and say, this is what we have, and we can slip line it, or we have to dig it up. Yes, rule of the board: anything under ten thousand dollars at this project we feel worthy of doing, we go ahead and move forward on this wish the board. It's over ten thousand dollars that we need to look at as far as what our bid threshold is. As a Chester mayor, our plan is to work with our city engineer, see if we can get a task order, see if we can get this figured out, so we can move forward on uh, either rehab or replacement of sewer. So I mean, you really and truly don't need a, a motion to do it, but we've already got you've already got that authority. But so Josh and Jim don't work. Oh, everybody's good with it. They'll move forward. Okay. Any any problem with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Because it's I really would like to get the application in the trial and just test the waters. I think uh, there's a little more openness in infrastructure projects now and. Uh, I'd like to give it, you know, give it a shot. So, okay. Any uh, questions for Josh? You got anything else, Josh? You need to that is on. Appreciate your work. No more questions. We appreciate it. We'll be talking to you soon, I'm sure. All right. Code enforcement. They're working, and I think uh, folks know what's going on. All right, police department, we've got something exciting. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you may be aware, the uh, bid process for the police department renovations ended yesterday. We opened yesterday. Uh, the low bid was $137,994. It was by monolith construction. So I don't, I don't know what uh, you guys are ready to do, but we, I would ask if you're going to approve the low bid that you. Uh, do it contingent upon John and I finding the time to review the bid, make sure it meets the bid specs and all that sort of stuff. We have not had time to do that since yesterday. So. Okay, all right. Everybody knows what low bid is. Uh, we 
we've got uh, this monolith construction. We have Chris from Monolith uh, here today if anybody's got any questions, but the, the motion would be uh, to accept the low bid contingent on review by the chief and uh, John Grant. Make sure it meets your bid staff. So that everybody understand that, comfortable with that. And I'll entertain that motion then. Motion to accept based on the contingency that it meets the bid requirements. All righty. The low bid to monolith. Okay. Monolith construction. 137.994. There second. Second for discussion. Second for discussion. Go ahead. What is in the budget for the police park renovation? We have $127,000 for remaining in, in uh, funds from insurance. And, and, and so we got to come up with the rest, and this doesn't include furniture. Does not include that. Well, it's, just, it's my understanding once we supply FEMA with the actual cost of it, we can then ask to cover the other $10,000, and which it may end up being $50,000. Get into. And what about contents also? Right. So <laughs> yeah, that well, the, the contents are included in the FEMA amounts for covering and pay, but but uh, but yes, that 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 is correct. The FEMA has indicated that if the costs are greater than their estimate, they will up their estimates and meet the actual cost as long as those costs uh, follow proper purchasing guidelines. So we we're not only going to be able to request what we're approved today. But we'll also be able to send in another request and say this is what our contents cost us to do this as well. That's my that's my understanding. It's, it's pretty. I'm I'm shocked we got this close. Be perfectly honest with you. And I would say that that we did receive one hundred and forty thousand dollars in insurance money in total. We escrowed that money. But we haven't actually pulled that money out of our savings account. I mean, we did have forty thousand dollars of of expenses to. To clean the facility, but we didn't pay for those expenses out of our operating. Uh, so we still actually have 140 in savings. Okay. Second stance. Second stance. Okay. Any more discussion? Discussion from the audience, public. All in favor, aye. Aye. All the same sign, motion passed 5 0, and let's get to work. Excited. That's all I have. All right. right. Any other questions for the chief? All right, thanks, Chief. Okie doke, uh, Ms. Pierce. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, on page 14 of your packet, there's a memo requesting permission to submit a grant application. We were contacted about this. We're still in the fact finding process on it, but we just need something with your blessings to be able to go forward. This applies to items that are either listed or eligible for listing on the National Historic Register. Those are the ones that will be considered. I believe there's $8,054,000 to be dispersed between 11 counties. So uh, Representative Shoke encouraged us to work with these people and apply for it. We are checking it out, working on it, get more information. Uh, I think it's great because our initial centennial uh, uh, grant request was five hundred thousand, and by the time they pared it down, it's uh, under three hundred. Yes, sir. And uh, so it'd be good if we could find a little more to finish that project. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, I should have no problem with trying to trying to get some of it. There are four structures in Gulf County that are listed on the National Register of Historic Places: the Centennial, the Lighthouse Complex, the uh, Keeper's Quarter, which is part of the Lighthouse. Fort Theater and what used to be the Catholic Church is now the Garden Center. That's the only four that are listed on the National Register. So will you include all of us? Or no, sir, it's only what we own. It would be the okay. Lighthouse and the Centennial. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions? Charlotte? Is there a motion to allow the uh, uh, grant application uh, back finding? So move to okay. motion. Section, whatever. One of these guys, okay. Okay. And uh, any further discussion on on that? All in favor, aye. Right. Those same signs. Thank you, Miss Charlotte. All right, sir. I would, I would like to mention also. I don't know if all of you have turned in your form one financial disclosure. It is due to the supervisor of elections by July one. If you haven't, please. 
consider it real soon. Thank you. Okay, citizens to be heard. Anyone, anyone like to come forward? Uh, yeah, my name is Mark Davis, and I got uh, a question that I brought from last meeting uh, about the gym, uh, this part. So the posters, the vendors call from going in the back. Uh, what the update? Are we going to still replace? Um, oh, posters, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Post, uh, we just put those posts down. I think um, last summer, we stopped these kids from getting by and put the um, chains up. So as soon as uh, we can get the um, material and get some guys out there, we put John up here um, right on top of it. John, you want to uh, come in on that? Well, um, I mean, we've been trying and trying real hard the past couple of years. The kids are back there. Yeah. And uh, we've been um, doing deviant, um, mischievous stuff uh, with, in the vehicles. And uh, it's just hard to try to keep, I mean, we keep officers out there, we control it, they move it, they cut the chains, yeah. cut the ropes. And, I mean, we're doing the best that we can. And, uh, I, I, I talked with John and we've been on top of it. We just, um, just in the stall right now. Right. And what is there a better option other than the change? Yeah, I think there is. And that's what I would go recommend. Uh, Mr. About if we could do uh, uh, a chain link structure with a gate you know, for maintenance reasons and so forth, that's probably an option. I don't think that's going to be very much money because the span's not that, uh, not right. that big. Yeah. And I'd be glad to go out and get those costs and bring it back to you. Right. And then, yeah. You know, or if it's cheap enough and you want us to go ahead and do it, we'd be glad to go ahead and do it. So it's however the board wants to proceed with that. I think this work with Commissioner Langston, y'all get together, and I think uh, uh, that's a great idea. And just let's do it. Matter of fact, I'll give you a call and we'll, we'll get over there and discuss it. I, I would think you need to come back to the board. I, I don't think the cost is going to be made. Okay. Thanks so much for that. Thank the you. next one, the other uh, question I asked on last meeting was uh, about uh, the young African American uh, police officer that we just hired recently. And uh, I asked the question was, did he resign or was he dismissed? And if he was dismissed, on what grounds? And the, the chief of police, he was not here. Well, the last meeting. well, here's the way we, any employee, new employee that, that we hire, they're hired on six months probation. Mm -hmm. And during that time, if uh, you know, they, they're not performing up the expectations of the you know, head of whoever, whatever department it happens to be, has the authority to, you know, let somebody go from basically, I, I guess you- Was he, was he, not, was he not performing? Well, I, we're, I, I don't think right now is, I mean, it, it's not a good time to talk about an individual. It's not a good time, but I don't like to bring up individuals mm -hmm. uh, basically kind of on trial, let's so put it that way. The best thing I think Marvin do, if you'd like to go and sit down with the chief, and I don't think he'd have a problem with that, okay. I'll sit down with the chief and, and talk about the issue. But uh, I, I just think it's just not a it's, it's not appropriate, I don't think, to bring some an individual to the forefront of a public meeting. Okay. I don't yeah. but but I mean I don't he's not trying to hide anything, I don't think. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you. Okay. Yeah. So. And the the other the other one I got to uh on Liver the Street. Over there near where your father's property would be between, uh, I think it's one, one, nine, 109 and 111. Yeah. There's an old, there's, a, there's a, a, a pine tree that's been, I think, struck by lightning. It's dead and limbs are, are falling off. And I talked to one of the residents on the street that they've been concerned and they've been brought up to the attention of our free water. But they say it's on city property. Yes, thank you. Uh, talk with Mr. Hunter. 
I think he called us on that. <clears throat> he was scheduled to come in this morning to cut that a lot of it, but uh, after speaking with him, he'll be here this evening. Okay, so yes, that tree should come down this evening. Okay, we felt the trust in him now. We're concerned that you asked me to bring this stuff. Absolutely. It's, so, no so, yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, and uh, that's uh, all I got. Right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate your coming all the way. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other citizens, please come forward. Uh, and Chester can his hand up for us. Uh, to the board, we uh, was trying to interject based on what we talked about earlier, simply because of the fact that the overlay was part of the, uh, John Henry and Mr. Grill planning it together. That was one of the reasons I was trying to answer that at that particular time. But uh, I also wanted to uh, further the conversation because at the last meeting I brought up the fact that we wanted to discuss the PACS request to the city about supporting um, uh, our, our um, person that we, we put forth to be our consultant. Uh, we put out a list of things that we're doing, a scope of what we're doing to all of the commissioners in order that we would have that discussion. I was hoping that we would be able to discuss that publicly today as to how we were going to move forward with um, getting some support, technical support um, from the city to the PAC to the CDC of how we can support our consultants. That was one of the things I was just hoping that we can discuss. Yeah, I think it's right now, it's fine time to do it. We had discussed that we, I thought I was kind of, as to the scope what we're doing, what we're driving, that we're trying to do, based upon the fact that uh, FAMU is coming in to help us uh, assist us, even with the scope of the overlay, what they're going to be able to bring to the table, especially when we have already gotten our consultant to get approval with the EBA a grant that's going to come in and assist them. It's not going to cost the city any funds, other than the fact that we need a consultant to guide us through that. It's been on the project since day one. And the other thing is the uh, you're talking about historical grant. We also got a partnership with the University of Florida that wants to bring in historical grant funds for you North know, Fort Central, especially those who are Washington High School out there. So those are things that we got on the table. Also, Jesse DuPont has been funding us with help with the food program. So some of the things that we're doing, we were actually working in the community to lessen any crisis that even the city might be in the place. So, uh, that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring that forth and hear from the city commission based upon how we can go forward with them, uh, with the city actually uh, helping us out support uh, that, uh, that, 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 that. So, so the issue, Chester, that you're really referring to is $33,500 for your consultant. I mean, that's the real issue that, that you're talking about. If you want us to somehow prove that amount of money for your consultant. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to just say just the thirty-three thousand dollars. Now that 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 comes from that that, that was that well that was what was in the memo right. I got from you. But we we are asking that to be done simply we're asking the city to support our efforts uh, in order to get some of the things done. That's, that's actually the city's not doing. But we can do ourselves. So we're asking for support in doing that. If the cost is thirty-three thousand dollars, then that's what we're asking. Well. Wow. I, I like to say um, that um, John has been on the forefront of um, what we've been doing, uh, what Pat has been doing for a number of years. I think uh, he deserves some compensation. I think that uh, 33000 we may have to discuss the amount, but as um, I really feel that John should be compensated and should be still, still, still be involved in what's going on um, on the north side because we know we initiated from, and you know uh, where they're trying to go right now. And uh, he's been a part of uh, a part of it for a while. So I support giving him something, but if if, um, if, if we have to uh, get together and figure out what we want to pay, if thirty three is too much, uh, let's let's discuss that. But not keeping them on board, uh, I don't think it would be it's fair. I think that's a technical part that we've got to get through. Uh, Mr. Langston, that we can't just 
<clears throat> write a check to somebody yeah. for that amount of that amount of money without going through a bid process. So, so that's where the rub is with me, anyway. So I, I just I mean, I, I'm not against John, and, and, and I know there's folks out there that think I am. I'm I'm for watching out for the tax dollars of the city of Port St. Joe, make sure they're spent appropriately, and and by by the legal legal law uh, uh, aspects of, of what we're required to do. So so that's why I ask questions. I'm sorry if I have, but I have to ask. I mean, they should. I mean, people supposed to ask. People supposed to ask questions, right? and uh, we all should. Um, uh, and if you need to know more about uh, what's going on, let's let's look into it. But I still think that uh, with uh, John already being in that position. Um, for all this time, we just need to consider it. I'm not saying just we're going to say, okay, let's just go ahead and give you the 30, 30 something dollars. No, all, all I'm saying is just let's, let's talk about it, let's discuss it, let's move forward and um, decide what direction we want to move in from there. I, 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 you wait to the, I mean, you still got budget coming up, you know, there's something to think about. Yeah, I agree. That's right. Just one question, Chester. Is it the PAC? Is it a 501c3? Well, we have the 501c3 CDC, primarily CDC. That's what the PAC created in order to gain funds. So, the way that we deal with C3s or, or services that are provided to the city typically is we've got a, a line item in the budget called non governmental organizations. Right. Uh, it's set in stone every year. If you want to increase for the following budget cycle, you come and tell us what you want that extra money for. But I mean, we've been doing this with the Humane Society for ever since I've been on the board. Uh, if there's some way to figure out how to work with the CDC in, you know, as a service that they're providing to the city, uh, then we, we could then justify paying into that. Um, but have you having to keep come back and bring in supporting documentation, you know, that's a lot of extra work. And we could just make this an automatic thing that as long as, you know, the PAC and the CDC are, are doing things for the community, it'll, it'll be funded at some amount. I, I don't believe we'll get thirty-three thousand well, dollars a year, but we, we, well, this is based upon a twelve-month series. We're not asking somebody to just jump up and say give me thirty-three thousand dollars just like that. That's not the question. The question is that we need the city to support some of the work that we're really doing in North Port St. Joe. I mean, we're really working over there to bring things to improve that. Our job to start out with was to redevelop North Port St. Joe, and that's what we're doing. We also, in that redevelopment, need the city to support what we're doing. Uh, can I, say, I, I think that the city has been doing a, a great job of uh, supporting uh, the PAC and everything that they've been trying to do. I just think that uh, moving forward, we would consider um, someone that's been there. And that was, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Ashbrook, for reaching uh, uh, that line out because I, I, I didn't know anything about him. I'm being honest. And, um, that's why I'm saying we discuss some things to figure out how to move forward. I mean, um, and I appreciate that. But see, John did not request this. We did it for him because of the fact that in 2006, February 2016, when we established this right, we did not hide it. We went to the city and to explain exactly what we were doing. And we have not, you know, died in our process at all. My think we're gaining uh, momentum by reaching out to outside entities in order to bring support to the city of Fort St. Joe. And I think it's proof to show how the University of Florida is coming in, Miami is coming in, uh, just about DuPont is supporting, especially now with even without food that we found out that some of the food effort that we were doing was inadequate, some of the elders could use. So we filed a, filed a grant, we had to file a grant for that. So you know we're getting support. We're doing something in the community that I that I think that the city would highlight how good the city really is. Not just North Fort St. Joe, but the city. Mr. Yeah, I, I had the same idea that Commissioner Ashford had regarding the outside agencies, like yeah. non-departmental line item, but on the budget. Yeah. yeah, and 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 I would say let's let's brainstorm and figure out what we want to fund and and go from there. Um, but I would like the money coming for the next right. few years. But I like that idea, Commissioner Hoffman. Um, I agree. Absolutely. David said, a lot of work has been done. 
and it's critical to continue to move forward. And Mr. Hendry has a lot of knowledge from what is taking place. I also agree that with Eric that I think we may be getting bogged down in the dollar amount. Right. Me being a negotiator, I'm going to try and lowball you to death and try and get you less and less money. But we have to agree that in the past, the PAC or not the PAC, the CRA funded, uh, was, I think it was 20,000. Yeah, yeah. You know, so maybe that's the starting point and we move forward from that. And uh, I'm concerned that if we look at that uh, non departmental line item, that, and I want to hear from the attorney and from uh, Jim on what are the guidelines because I, I looked into some of that today and the ones that we're paying, none of them are over like 8,500. 8,000. 8, yeah, most of them are, you know, 3,000, 1,500. So there may be some rules that cap it at 10,000. Uh, so I want to make sure when we move forward, we're doing it where we're not looked at like Lynn Haven City. Uh, you know, I want to do it properly, but I think it's important to figure out how to make this happen. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm tired of kicking it down the road. I'm ready to get it done. Uh, and I think that maybe first step would be to approve what has been approved in the past few years and see where, where Mr. Henry responds uh, or he maybe comfortable with starting at that point. And then if, if the workload increases, then the compensation would increase. Well, I don't want to say I'll have to say this way, but what we, I think we sometimes miss is the fact that when we brought the plan to the city, we brought the plan to the city for the city to approve. The city approved of what we were trying to do. It's an ongoing thing. We know that we've been shortstop one time by what? Michael the Star and then the pandemic. Those things has kind of prohibited us from going forward as fast as we would like to do. But we also are in, in uh, request for funds from other entities that has said, hey, I like what you guys are doing. But we also in a waiting period something because they sometimes say, well, what are the cities bringing to the table? And what we bring to the table as North Los Angeles, part of the city, is the fact that we're really going to do something to that area over there. That area right there stands out along, especially when you have storm problems and so forth. Right now, we have land that's already developed over there that can be used. So we're trying to get people involved with, you know, using that land up for housing or whatever. So there's a lot of ongoing things that we're really trying to do that's going to be a benefit to the city. That's why it's important. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Gallagher, I think you had his hand up. Come and being child together, the real reason I'm here. Uh, I've been talking with the Minister Alliance, uh, or as the North Minister Alliance, uh, Superintendent Wood, and Brother Jeffrey over here on this side. We've been trying to come together to have a day of prayer. Uh, and what we're trying to put together is that uh, it will probably be done at the football field. Uh, we're going to try to involve. Go County as a whole, not you know, as a group. And that's something I'm continuing to say north side, south side, you know, north in County, south. But this prayer is going to be universal. We try to work with the Minister Alliance up on the wall, and we want to have a day, really an hour or two of prayer at the football field. Just kind of bring it to all the people that to be because, like I said, it's on the school board, you don't have to go to the mission. But then if they don't, then what we talk about is maybe using the provision in Washington. <clears throat> we don't have, we don't get approved for them. Sounds good. I had an excellent uh, uh, afternoon of prayer Sunday before last at, uh, down by the lighthouse mm -hmm. after well received. And uh, I was there and it was fairly well attended. It was a little drizzly rain. and. Uh, Think more prayer the better. Thank you, sir. All right, anybody else? All right, move on to discussion items. Commissioner Ashbrook. 
Uh, I actually got something for the board. If anyone still needs to do the required ethics training, there's two webinars for two hours apiece, 10 a.m. tomorrow and then 10 a.m. the next Wednesday. The League of Cities is doing a uh, complimentary during the pandemic online, so you don't have to go anywhere to do it. I'll get the information to Charlotte if y'all want to attend. That's all I have, Mayor. All right. Mr. Lowry. Um, I, this just came up. I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, there's a tree right there at the corner of the post office. Uh, it's, it's one of those bigger crepe myrtles that it's leaned over into the, uh, in the right of way over that. I believe it's over the, the sidewalk there. But whenever you turn, whenever you're looking uh, to your left at that stop sign, just go by there and look at that. Uh, Chief, I mean, it, I, I think it's a safety issue there. And I mean, it may need to be taken down, but whatever you guys think. Um, lastly, I just want to personally thank the public for allowing me to serve another two years on this board. Good. Look forward to working with you guys. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Lonnie. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Hawkins, Mr. Dodd. Good work with you guys. Um, it's just something that's been on my mind about um, the ditches. I think I mentioned it um, a, a year and a half ago about we having a crew to clean the ditches out um, throughout Fort St. Hugo year. I think that the three, I don't know, I'm, I'm not an uh, expert in uh, how many neighbors and operators you need to run something, but I don't think you need what, three or four employees to, to start a crew like that. It's just a suggestion that, that I've been thinking about, maybe you guys would think about. Um, because doing her, it, 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 I was preventative maintenance. You know? we, we don't need to wait till uh, hurricane season or uh, uh, any hurricane season to start digging, cleaning ditches out and doing certain things that we got to be prepared. So that's, that's, that's what's been on my mind about a crew that there was nothing but that year ago. And I know it's hard to find employees who get interviewing and trying to get people in, but you know, just something to think about. Yeah, yeah. for many maintenance is important. Okay, that's fine. The only thing I have is a thank you to uh, allowing me to serve uh, two more years. Uh, I heard David say, leaned over and Brent said, I voted for you, but I, I, you didn't say that to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I do appreciate that I'm, I'm, I'm still sitting here. All right. All right, guys. The only thing I have is what I've been talking about for a while, and the, the, the CDC recommends three things I want everybody to think about sanitizing, mask, and six feet. Please, everybody, let's, let's set an example for, for everybody in town and, and, uh, Commissioner, I mean, uh, Reverend Gathers and, and, and the folks of the Ministerial uh, Alliance, I wish you guys would talk about that a little bit yourself, yes, as sir. well as the census, bringing up the census thing. So we can, we can spread the word, we can get it out, we can be safe, and uh, we can uh, move forward. So that's all I have. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. All right. Thank you all for coming.